Hi, I'm Tommy Master from data36.com and in this video I will show you the easiest way of installing Python to your computer as well as its cool extensions and libraries like Pandas, NumPy or Jupyter. After finishing this tutorial you can jump right on learning and practicing Python for data science and you will be able to run actual Python code on your computer. Before we get started, this is the very first episode of a longer series that I will call Python for Data Science from scratch or something similar. By the time you are watching this, probably there will be many episodes published here. Either way, you will find the link for the whole series in the description. Okay, let's do this. This is going to be super easy because whether you are a Mac user or a Windows user or a Linux user, you will have to download and install only one program to your computer and that's Anaconda. More precisely, Anaconda Navigator and I go to anaconda.com and I choose products, individual edition. Now, I record this video in 2021. If they change the website or anything in the future, I won't be able to update this video, but I have added a link for this page in the description and I will most definitely keep that updated. So you feel free to click that, but the point is choose this, click download and download the version that fits your operating system. And because I'm on a Mac and I'm lazy, I will choose this installer, the graphical installer. Thank you for downloading. And while it's downloading, let me mention that Anaconda team is pretty nice because they offer their product for free for individuals. So most of you who are watching this video, you can use Anaconda for free. Let me also mention that I'm not affiliated with Anaconda in any ways. I just like their product. Now that it's downloaded, you just have to install it. Okay, so the installation should be pretty straightforward, but just in case, if you get stuck with admin privileges, here's the bulletproof way to open this installer. On your Mac, right click and open. And you should just confirm that this is from a trusted source. So you can click continue. And if you are on Windows, it's right click and run as administrator. But apart from that, again, the installation process is pretty standard. Introduction, continue, continue. You should read this, of course. I won't in this video. Okay, I read it before. Destination select. So it says it's not allowed to install here, but in fact, if I click here, then click back here. Install for me only. So this is for my own user. It will just work, so install for me only, continue. It will go to my home folder. I could change this, but I won't. And it starts to install the whole thing. It will take a while, so I will speed the video up. Okay, it says installer would like to access files in your desktop folder, that's fine. You should grant that permission to your installer. PyCharm, it's a cool Python IDE, the development environment, but we won't use that for now. You can click the link and check that out if you want to, but I won't. I just click continue. And with that, Anaconda is installed. Open it. When you are using it for the first time, it will take a while, but now it's here. Let's discover it a little bit. As you see here, you have everything you need. IBM Watson, JupyterLab, Jupyter Notebook, even RStudio and more. Well, in this tutorial series, we will use Jupyter Notebook for our Python projects. And by the way, I quite often use Jupyter Notebooks in real life data science projects too, mainly for prototyping Python scripts and machine learning algorithms. But the point is, it's definitely not just for learning and practicing. Before we open Jupyter, let's take a quick look at the environments tab. Because the cool thing about Anaconda is that every data science library you might need in your projects is already installed. 
NumPy, for instance, or Pandas, or Scikit-Learn, SciPy, even Seaborn, Matplotlib, so everything and more. It's literally that simple. You install Anaconda and you don't have to worry about installing anything else. It's even better because, as far as I know, Anaconda also takes care about compatibility issues, so it also synchronizes the different versions of the different libraries you will use. If you have ever installed these libraries for yourself, like NumPy and Python and so on, one by one, you know that sometimes compatibility can be a real problem. Anyways, that's fixed, so all you have to do is to go back to the Home tab and click Launch Jupyter Notebook. It will open up two new windows. The first one is a terminal window. You can leave this in the background, although make sure you don't close this window as this is the place where your Jupyter Locker server runs. As you can see. Well, in other words, if you close this, Jupyter won't work. The other window that opens is a new tab in your favorite browser. So for me, a Google Chrome tab and it says localhost 888. This means that your Jupyter notebooks will run on your local computer's 8888 port. So as long as the Jupyter server runs in terminal and your Anaconda Navigator is open, you can open your Jupyter notebooks in any browsers on your computer by typing localhost colon 8888. Again, this will be only available on your computer so it's totally safe and all. And also note that sometimes I will open an incognito window and type localhost 888. So sometimes it also asks for a token. You can find this token in your terminal window here, but by default, these won't be needed, but I will just show you. I copy paste here and it works. Okay, I close the incognito window and go back to my original window. And again, your Jupyter server is now running on your local computer. And as you can see, this is my computer's main folder. I will just go into the documents folder here, then into the Python tutorials folder that I created on my computer before. And I will create a new Jupyter notebook. I click new. Python 3, and there you go. This is your Python 3 environment. I will create a separate tutorial about how to use Jupyter Notebook, but for the time being, let's just test it out. Print hello world, it works. And you can also import libraries like import numpy snp, import pandas spd, cool, no error messages, so it really just works. I can rename the Jupyter Notebook, like a first try or something, rename. And let me just show this to you, Python tutorials, and see it's actually a new file stored on my computer in this folder. When I'm done, I can save this Jupyter Notebook by clicking here and it will be saved into this file here, just like a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or any other traditional files you used before. And then I will close this notebook with the close and halt command. Done. And you can also stop the whole Jupyter server by clicking quit. This stops the server and with that, as you can see, Jupyter shutdowns in terminal as well. And indeed, if you refresh this window, you cannot access the localhost 8888 address anymore. But if you want to come back, I will close this and the terminal window and this as well. So if you want to come back, you just have to click Jupyter Notebook launch again from Anaconda Navigator, of course. It will start the terminal window and the server, and it opens a browser tab again. 
and so it's working again. You can go to Documents, Python Tutorials, and you know, since this first try IPython Notebook is stored as an individual file on my computer, I can just open it and, and continue from where I left it. Cool. I will just close and halt again and quit the server again. And this is pretty much it. Just download Anaconda to your computer, install it, and you will be able to start writing your own Python code, which is always the best way to learn and practice Python for data science. Just a quick comment before I wrap this up. As I said at the beginning of this video, this is the easiest way to install and use Python, Pandas, Jupyter, and everything else on your computer. This solution is perfect for beginners to get started with Python for data science, but I have to mention that in real life, for real projects, I often use another, better solution. Instead of Anaconda, I often use Python and all its libraries on remote servers, which has many advantages compared to using them on your local computer. For instance, with a remote server, first, you can automate your scripts. Secondly, your scripts will run in the cloud, so the whole thing will be more scalable and less fragile than running stuff on your local computer. And three, also, a remote server is a separate environment, so if you break something, it won't mess up your personal computer. But again, the simpler solution that I showed you in this tutorial with Anaconda and everything will be just perfect to get started with Python. And in another tutorial, I show you how to set up the remote server version of Python. Find the link for that in the description. And you are all set. You can go ahead and start to learn and practice Python. And remember, this is just the first episode of my Python for Data Science tutorial series. So you can move on to the next one where I will show you how Jupyter Notebook works. And we will also run a few very basic Python commands. Find the link in the description. But with that being said, this is the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to learn more about data science and about how to become a data scientist, take my 50 minute video course called How to Become a Data Scientist. It's free and linked in the description. Also, check out my six week online course, the Junior Data Scientist First Month video course, which is a super practical, hands on, and fun way to learn data science and more particularly, what data science looks like in real life. It's a six week simulation of being a junior data scientist at a true to life startup. So the course is called the junior data scientist first month and I linked that in the description as well. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm Tommy Master from data36.com. Until next time.